I mean, what can you tell us about the level of coverage that you're going to be able to provide today? Well, good afternoon, Stephen. I mean, as your uh, reporter just said there, ambulance services across the uh, country, uh, and this is certainly the case here in Wales, have been working with their trade unions to agree exemptions from the strike action today. For us here, that means that we've got the ability to continue to respond to patients in the immediately life-threatened category. That's the red ones, so people who are in cardiac arrest, who are unconscious, who aren't breathing, uh, and also uh, an exemption for some patients in our Amber 1 category. So in England, that's uh, the category 2. Uh, and those are for patients with strokes and cardiac chest pains and some others. So um, those patients that are seriously ill and injured will continue to receive a response here in Wales today as a result of the exemptions that the uh, trade union has agreed. But less serious patients, patients with less serious conditions, will likely wait longer uh, and will continue to provide advice over the phone with nurses and paramedics in our control rooms to uh, patients where that's appropriate. Um, we heard from, from one paramedic in, uh, from Will uh, earlier on, and I don't know if you heard that, but she was saying it's not just about pay. I mean, clearly pay is important, right? And people are feeling that they're being underpaid. But it's also about things like, you know, uh, unpaid breaks and very short breaks, but also about what they're, what they're expected to do, which is partly down to the pressures that the NHS is under at the moment. So how much of those concerns realistically can you address? <laughs> Well, it's very difficult for us, uh, Stephen. And of course, the dispute is not with us as the ambulance sector employers. The pay dispute is, is a matter for government. Um, but certainly, you know, contact centre staff that I've been talking to in recent weeks or our paramedics and emergency medical technicians on the streets that I've been speaking to, you know, talk to me about very real concerns they have about patient safety and their ability to be able to respond to patients in a timely way. You know, we all joined the ambulance sector to provide great care to patients and to help people when they need it most. And our clinicians here have been explaining to me that they are deeply frustrated uh, by their inability to do that because of pressure across the rest of health and social care, which ultimately lead to delays in our ability to hand over patients at the emergency department and then respond in the community. So those things are affecting the choices that uh, our people are making in terms of whether they strike or not. I mean, on that, I mean, I'm fascinated by what you say. I, I wonder if, as, as chief executive of the Welsh Ambulance Service, do you support this action? Well, look, the, the trade unions are uh, inducing their members, our staff, uh, to take strike action to uh, make their point, you know, the point that the trade unions have about pay uh, and the conditions in which their members, our staff, are working are, are clearly affecting um, uh, their choices that they're making. I mean, our position on this is one of wanting to work with the trade unions through the period of strike action. That's simply to support our people in whatever choice that they choose to make and also to ensure that we can provide the best service we can uh, to patients in our communities during the disruption which inevitably occurs as a result of the strike action. But the issue, the core issue, uh, is one that us as the employer here in Wales, certainly we, we can't resolve uh, as it's a dispute uh, overpay uh, with government. Yeah, but do you, do you think then that, that those in power, those who can make sort of real decisions on this, are listening to the likes of you because you're a very important voice in, in something yeah. like this? Because, I mean, in effect, what you're saying is a lot of the concerns that these ambulance staff have, you agree with. You're saying, yes, you know, the, there is too much pressure. They're not able to... The, those concerns for patient safety are very real are legitimate, but are you being listened to? Well, th those concerns about patient safety certainly are real. I mean, the Association of Ambulance Chief Executives, the group that represents ambulance services across the United Kingdom, published a report about 12 or 18 months ago looking precisely at uh, avoidable harm uh, which occurs as a result of handover delays at the emergency department and our inability, therefore, to respond in the community. And that identified that there is avoidable harm occurring. So that's a very real issue for us. That's a concern for me. It's a concern for our clinicians and all of our staff uh, too. So you know, we have clearly been working with government and the rest of the health service. I can certainly talk about you know, what we've been doing here in Wales to avoid conveying patients to the emergency department unless it's absolutely necessary, providing more advice over the phone and using video technology to do that as well. So there's a role for the ambulance sector to play in reducing pressure 
uh, across the rest of uh, health and social care, and particularly in, in urgent and emergency care, 